iPods are old, but they're transitioning from outdated junk old into time capsule nostalgic old. I mean, I still enjoy using iPods. I certainly don't want to use period phones of the time. <laughs> Glad these are gone. But this newfound retro nostalgia means you guys are finding these in drawers and you're real keen to relive those good old mates days. Well, too bad you can't. I told you it's old. It's cooked and they won't turn on anymore. And it's all your fault. But you can fix them. That's why I like iPods so much. You can tear them down and rebuild them as many times as you like. I mean, even if you hate Apple, these are really fun little geek projects. I was going to do a mini series on every single generation on how to fix them. And I figured, ah, skirt, this is just one big segmented video. So you look down the timeline and find your iPod and get straight to the biscuit. So if it seems like I'm repeating myself for a couple of things, it's because I'm expecting folks just to be jumping to where they need to be. We're going to do the mini tick. But before you skip to your model, right, put that mouse down. You know how to speak iPod, right? Because these guys give you a lot of big clues as to what's going inside of your white rectangle. And all iPods talk the same way. Except for this guy's a little bit different because it's a freak, but you know, I'll discuss. So once you've sat through this quick crash course, you have my blessings to jump to your model of iPod and get started. How to speak iPod. iPods make faces at you when stuff just isn't quite right and it can be the clue as to what's going on. If you see this, then it's saying the drive is dead. It's asking for data and only sadness returns. But hey, perfect excuse to put a flash kit through it and I'll bring up flash kits as I go through each generation. But if you see this, it's saying there's a drive and it's reading, but it can't find what it's looking for. It could be corrupted or blank. You know, so a simple restore can fix this, but you're going to lose all your music. But I've seen this warning when iPods have crazy low battery and then after replacing the battery it boots up with all of its music intact. Very rare but it has happened. Uh, speaking of batteries when they get really low iPods start to beep at you. Beep, 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 beep. It's basically screaming for a wall outlet and it's incredibly upset with your blatant abuse. But like a good dog, iPods have commands that they obey. Simple ones like, you know, for instance, say you want to put the display to sleep. Hold play pause. It is asleep. To say it freezes for some reason when you're doing silly flash modding and you need to do a hard reset, send a button in menu. It's like smothering it with a pillow. It's sleep time now. Next is disk mode. Sometimes if it's just not restoring properly, having disk mode helps. And it's what I use to run Windows 10 through these things. So we're gonna do a hard reset. Smother with the pillow. Sleepy time. That's it. And then middle and play pause. There we go. I think you can barely see that. It says disk mode. You know, she's ready to go. But when I was doing the one terabyte iPod, I need an extra command because I was pushing that thing so hard that I had to enter debug mode. It kept corrupting while I was trying to shuffle 50,000 songs and would freeze and say that the drive was corrupted, which sucked because it would have meant another 18 hours of syncing to get the music back. But then putting it in debug mode helped. So, hard reset. Then middle and left. Oh, yeah, and then you're in the weird zone. Yeah, and it's just like, you can you can just suss out all the weird business. Oh, look, sleep, sleepy time. No, sleep forever. That sounds very grim. Let's do it. Uh, well. Hey, she's all good. But if you want the most pain-free iPod experience, especially if you want to play with the really old lads, you're going to need a little bit of tech on your side to help jumpstart these in a life. iPods are essentially vintage now, and some of them seem completely dead and lifeless, or as I've mentioned before, with a corrupted drive or something. So if you're looking just to jump on eBay and find some rough, untested, as-for-parts iPods and seeing if you can get them going again, Best thing you can grab is one of these, a Firewire charger. Firewire and USB have nothing in common and this pushes out way more power. I didn't make these cables for very long, but you can get third party ones. Firewire to 30 pin. Example time. It's that iPod I got from Cashies. The battery's cooked. It comes USB power. Yeah. And it says charging, please wait. I don't know if you can see that. And it will sit like that forever. I've tried before. I waited 20 minutes and never got off that. Give it up you. Now let's try with the big stinky firewire. <laughs> right? This is jumping juice for iPods. You can see there's extra power in here. If you're looking to get really serious into this, I've found having an old computer around just makes it so much easier, especially if you want to play with the firewire lads. The iMac here is a 2007 model. It's the very last model to have native firewire 400 in it. And it's run on El Capitan and hooks up to the Wi-Fi, which is important. You need internet with iTunes. And like basically any Mac made from 2008 onwards, I can say is an awesome little pod restore thing because you can convert any of the firewire 
wires to this. So, yeah. And on newer Macs, I know iTunes is gone, but no lie, you can get the dongles USB-C to Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt to Firewire, Firewire 800 to Firewire 400. It looks janky and it ain't cheap, but you can get a 2001 iPod into a brand new Mac and it works perfectly and even charges it. iPods are built into Mac OS. Like, thank you Apple, very cool. Microsoft dropped the Zune as soon as I could. Tool-wise, I recommend you get some of these, I mean, blades, and they are sharp. You want to get the ones with this rubber coating in the middle. Uh, Iseismo, I believe it's pronounced, make them as well. You just don't want these bareback ones. They will cut you to ribbons. Even these ones can be dangerous. And if you do have one of these, wrap them in tape or something. You can have spudgy kind of tools like this. These are nice and cheap. Basically, every battery kit comes with one of these, one of these, and billions of these, which is good because they are very useful and you will need these, especially for the like more advanced jobs. People using knives and things and whatever's. Yeah, come on. Guys, in America, don't you guys have same day delivery? Like, we wait a week just for groceries. Better you get an iFixit kit and just have everything you need. <laughs> and of course, if you're jumping in the doos, go and suss an iFixit guide. They're amazing, and it's all laid out like a Lego build. I sure as heck did before making this vid. I'm gonna be your dirty first point of contact. They do it properly. <laughs> and that's a crash course, mate. You even get a diploma. Ah, words to live by. So in this video, I'm going to be tearing all these iPods down to their chassis rails, right down to the motherboards. So basically, you just get up to the point that you need fixed, replace the part, and then backtrack the other way. And with all of these iPods, the main culprits are batteries and hard drives, honestly. After that point, displays, then maybe the touch wheels, and then maybe the headphone assemblies. And after that, you're basically no man's land, chasing very small problems, because hey, these are vintage now, and they're the oldest they've ever been, so new problems are coming up all the time. Oh man, now it's time to tear down every single model of iPod now. But before I do, I'm actually going to glove up. This gives you an extra layer of skin. iPods are just not quite as slippery. You cut the glove before you cut your hand with those blades. The first gen. So how do you tell it's a first gen? Well, the middle spins. That's right. But the other big one is that font. <laughs> and that smack of late 90s right there. See the second gen, which is basically the 1S if you ask me. They adopted the same font they're still using with the iPhone this very day. And also if we look on top, how the back case is integrated, the fact that there's no cover on the Firewire port, but from the front, very similar. We'll get to this guy in a bit. So in terms of opening this up and getting into it, it's actually one of the easiest ones. There are these hooks. You want this to go in flat. You don't just want to stick it in and reef upwards. See, down and pop. I feel you only need to do one side and then it'll all just slide out. You know, I see people doing laps, you know, you don't need to do that. Gonna pop this corner down here. Hey, hey, wiggle, wiggle. There we are. This is nice and easy because there is nothing on this back case. You can see all this metal assembly stuff is where these hooks go in. Can you see the hooks? So yeah, we push them down. Weird flappy bits. Like huge credit card looking battery here. Yes, you can see some scribbling here because this has been a rescue. As I said, hard drives and batteries are just will always let go. This guy's drive wasn't working. So you just pull that out like that. It's just covered in guff. <laughs> all the original rubber stuff's missing. We pulled our bat out here. So if you're doing a battery and a hard drive, which is super common, this is where you'd stop. Then you just backtrack. You know, put another drive in there and put another bat in there. People have flash modded these. It's a weird dance and all sorts. So if you have a first gen iPod, my recommendation is to find up to a 20 gig third gen hard drive because these talk with Firewire the same way these do. And uh, yeah, it can read up to 20 gigs. So you actually get a bonus as well. All right, we've got our star looking mate here all the sprue in the world. And we're just gonna take out all of these. Look, the tin is useful. I've actually never done this before. I'm just being brave, you know. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, baby. Nice. So there are these little tiny clips here which are actually holding the display on. Oh, and I think I bent that one too far. Great. Put clipping back on, you jerk. Yeah, I bent that clip too far. Whoops. <laughs> I'm just, just breaking a collectible iPod, mate. Just don't worry about it. Under the click wheel is a little connector, which is in just a nightmarish position. I'm gonna use one of these plastic doodlies. Oh yeah, there you go. 
first gen display hope i haven't broke it and from there you can quickly get the hard drive cable out which is just clipped in under there if you need to replace this and this click wheel stays on the motherboard look at that plastic tabs so yeah don't bust it and now i gotta get it back together again oh this display connector is terrible <laughs> Oh, I can't think of a worse spot to put it. Can I get these broken clips back in position? <laughs> yeah, I bent them a little bit too hard. Oh, hey, that's tolerable. I'm gonna leave that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, time to screw it up. But like, not actual, but yes, actual. Get our non-genuine guy here. Uh, yeah, there's little locating pegs here, you know, so like you can't mess it up. This isn't the original drive, this isn't how it's meant to be in here, it's fine, it's rare, blah blah. Ah, uh, see if there's actually any charge in this. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Go Bubby! She's working just fine. Let's see if we can seal it up with the cable in. That's good. It's okay to disconnect. Is there any enough power to boot? Come on. I'm calling that a win. Yay. I disassembled it and put it back together myself. Go to sleep. Thank you. It's going to look very similar, but the second gen. I really do stand by that this is just the iPod 1S. These are so similar to the very first ones that you can take the hard drive out of this put it into this and not only will it work but it won't even need restoring or you it'll just it will just work no other ipod does that so it's the 1s and yeah as I said before it's got a different case on the back and the different writing and that's a big dent so when i open up the first gen we didn't need to worry about the hold switch this time we really do need to worry about that hold switch it needs to be locked. If you don't do that and open it, you will break the little switch in there and you won't have a hold anymore. Don't ask me how I know. Oh. And because all this is inbuilt into this back case, it makes it a little bit harder because this actually has to come up and then off. Otherwise it's gonna pull your headphone jack out. So I'm cutting downwards and in because there's little clips in there that hold in underneath. So we're trying to go under to push them out like that. So with most iPods, I only need to do one side. But because of this business on the top, it's best if we do a little bit on the other side as well. Okay, and then we're gonna go upwards. There you go. Oh, man. oh there's bits. Yep, if you're rescuing pods on eBay, get used to that. And yes, you can replace all the plastic gubbins in the top. It's just little screws. You just gotta find a replacement. Pull back these flap lads. Oh, that's sticky. This is the original battery as well. Big credit card looking thing. Uh, made by Sony. So all this business on top is because this is a 20 gig model. So it's got the double height, big chungus drive in it. So it's got this spacer on the top. But we just pull it away from there. But this has, uh, yuck, a rubber mat on the bottom. Pull these tabs toward and only a little bit. There we are. And then hard drive cable out. We can get this grossness out. Take your star driver looking business. I'm not very good at proper names. <laughs> this is when the case is handy. Haha! <laughs> Got him! So if you want to replace the front case, now is when you do it. Look at that! Removable click wheel! Apple, you've learned! It's the same as before, those little brown lads, we just want to pull them towards us and it should pop out. Hey, very fragile clips back here that hold the display in. I really do mean fragile. I find doing the top ones first the best. Et voila! There we are, one display, up and out. So if you need to replace the display, now you jump back in. Uh, well, I've never done that before either. So, <laughs> see if I can get this back together. Check it out, there's the buttons on the click wheel. Oh, this is so much easier than the first gen. Oh yeah. Yeah, you gotta make sure those pegs line up. Alrighty! Did I put this in upside down? No? It's hard to tell. Oh no! It tore! <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna have to open up the backup one and get the... <laughs> oh, it's just spiralling out of control, isn't it? This one's completely cooked, by the way. Let's hope the click wheel works. I promise I won't put this in upside down this time. Uh, take two. 
It's one with the big slash and dash cut down the front from eBay. Uh huh. All right, that's gone. Oh, thank Jimberies that I've got. <laughs> I've got spares. <laughs> I think there's holes for all of it as well. I actually didn't really need to take this off. Oh well. Pretend this is a new battery. This thing doesn't deserve a new battery. <laughs> as long as it talks to the computer, I'm gonna call it a win. Ha ha! Ah, the battery is crazy low, but you saw it booted. I'm calling that a win. Oh, it's still going! Oh, it went for a little bit! So up and over. Booyah! The third gen. This to me is the second gen and it's just an absolute freak of an iPod really. All touch and like the most expensive I believe of the time. They went all out with this guy. High frame rate screen, backlit, everything. This already has a replacement battery in it but it's not happy. Yeah, those backlights. So to do the hard reset, it's the middle two. Yeah, and then the outside too, for this mode or something. I was right, yeah! <laughs> Middle two, outside two. Weird. But hey, you can still do it. Grab your tool, and you want to stick to one side, because usually when you get one side open, it's all good. There's these clips that we're trying to push down. You don't just want to stick it in and reef upwards. And I'm cutting along the seam to, fight, to get the tool to bop in there, and then you can pull outwards much easier. Uh-huh. So you want to flip this off to the right. Yes, there's writing all over this. This guy is history. Big chungus double height drive. Let's get that out of there. Look, it's like a blanket. And it's got a plug down in this corner. There you go. So this here is the audio jack and like the lock switch and stuff. There you are. So if you're having headphone problems, it could be this guy in here. So you can swap that out. Again, you just got to find one. There's no battery in here. <laughs> oh what? It's not no wonder it's been weird. Found a filthy one. <laughs> They're tiny by the way. Oh wow, this is a good battery. Oh what a cool guide that I've got. There you go. That's how it's supposed to look in there. I thought there was a battery in here. There isn't, and I don't have a spare. Dingus. Pretend the uh... But you find that this is stuck down. So I find maybe a little bit of heat from a hairdryer or a bit of isoprope will help you get it unstuck. Because yeah, if you just pull on this cable, you know. <laughs> they all just fall off. We got our star tool. We're gonna take all these lads out. Mm-hmm. There we are. Got a busted display, mate. That's how you pop it back in. And basically, you can see all the circuitry here for all the touch business and such. You know, if you're really having troubles with that stuff, it might be easy just to get a whole front panel just like this. All right, let's put it back together. Like a glove. You know, pretend this isn't a fire hazard. You know, you, you plug that in like that. Right, great. And then, you know, the, the battery goes in like, like that. I thought I had a battery in it. I wonder why it's been acting weird. And in terms of putting the hard drive in, uh, third gen's weird because I have this dependence on Firewire, yeah. which is this cable that I showed you at the beginning. And why these could be hard to find, they were only really made for the third gens. They can sync over USB and Firewire, but they only charge over Firewire, which could be really annoying. Just be aware, like these are beautiful, but I'm gonna do a video on how these are the, like the worst iPod to own. <laughs> They're very pretty, but very annoying. And yes, people have flash modded these, there's an iFlash one for the, you know, these older school looking hard drives. But I got a feeling that you got to really want this design to try and get the flash modding to work. It does work. It's just extra fiddly, the Firewire, blah. My little test is how you know that it's actually connected. If you could pick it up by the drive and it stays in, it usually means it's connected. So no, there is no battery in this lead. Just pretend that there is. This is the power of Firewire. No battery at all. That's fun. The best generation. 
the fourth generation. This is the color one. I'm a really big fan of the monochrome ones. This one I've just digged out of the pile. I've never been in this one yet. <laughs> Robert, mate, I got your iPod, it's right here. But difference between the fourth gen monochrome and the color one or the photo one, they're basically the same guy once you get in there. Slightly different connectors, but in the same places. Uh, unfortunately, you can't swap headphone jacks between these. They've got a different plug. And no, you can't swap displays for obvious reasons. Haven't tried the click wheels yet. That's, you know, future video kind of thing. Thing. But this currently has Windows 10 installed on it. Big Chungo 60 gig. Let's bust open this sad looking monochrome. And actually, let's see what she does. Got my Firewire jungle juice. Ugh. I hear something. Oh, it's boot looping. Aha, look at that. Dead drive, mate, just as I thought. Perfect excuse to bust into this. So we're gonna take our flat bladed tool and we're just gonna focus on one side. People kind of do laps, you don't need to. There are clips holding this down and we're trying to push between them and push inwards. People think if you just get into the top bit and you can just reef on it, you can't. So I cut along the seam to get the tool into it and then made a year in. Oh, look at all the pocket filth, yuck. So off to the right. So that's stuck together, just be careful, don't tear, there we are, here's our drive, up and out, uh huh, sad, here's our battery, this lad really, they really do like to stick in there, oh, someone's been in here, that cable's meant to go underneath the motherboard, maybe this has been replaced, hmm, huh. see if we can just reef her out, lazy man style, <laughs> That'd do it. This might be good. Someone's been in here. There we are. So, you know, if you're having headphone problems, you can take that assembly out. You could even replace the plastic around it. Hold switches in there. And you could even replace this cable if you need to. I'm going to take our star shaped doodler. I'm going to undo all these biggie bolt screws. What? Back case is super handy. Got to get those sneaky ones. So, you got to take off the click wheel ribbon here and the display ribbon up here. There's your motherboard and the display just pops out like that. And this stupid thing, you oh look, broken clips. Get used to that if you're rescuing iPods on eBay. Oh, look at the mess. So the way we get this guy out is we push. Oh dear. Oh dear. I hate getting these click wheels out. I feel like I'm just gonna break it. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> it's so violent. Oh dear. All right, let's get it back together. Don't spin around you. Good enough. Oh, that's a bit bent out of shape. Well, we'll have to <laughs> have to see if this works. Someone was in here before. Ugh. Welcome to eBay Pods. That looks messed up. If that works, I'm gonna be blown away. Normally, I wouldn't screw this back together unless I knew that all of this worked. But you know, it's <laughs> it's more about the journey than the actual results, I suppose. Oh, whoops! I didn't do the battery underneath the thing as well. Oh well. This is already rough as guts in here anyways. <laughs> I'm such a bad example. I find these guys have such a nice simple design and they're so easy to flash mod. I mean, <laughs> dirty eBay business, but get a nice legit iFlash adapter, compact flash. I've already done so many vids on these. I mean, you can go and check that out. Put a piece of tape to cover the back and then this becomes your hard drive. Boom, you flash modded it. And then iFlash has a more legit, nice looking arrangement. See, piece of foam. I do recommend the iFlash ones. They're just so much better. Not sponsored, but they're just so much better. <laughs> Apparently this drive is good. I'll take my word on that. Line up the pegs, there's only one way it goes in. We're gonna do the dirty cheaters way, and we're just gonna smash this over the corner. It's meant to go underneath the motherboard, all right? I'm cheating, it's because I know the rules. Good enough. USB struggling, get out. What about sweet lady firewire? Uh-huh. Oh, this has got rock box on this drive. <laughs> Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get rid of that. That's way too funny. Oh, it's still going. Yeah, for how long? And look, the touch thing works. Rough old girls, hey man, let's butt this up. That's way too funny. Oh dear, okay, all right. Whoop. Oh dear. 
Woohoo! It's got rock box on it. That's so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Must have used it for a previous thing. All right, nice. So while it's not an iPod classic, it deserves a look in because these are awesome, the mod. This is a very sad one. I hope no one's been in here. So it's actually like you, how you guys will find it, I suppose. Man, these are so easy to mod. You want to flash mod it? You just need this. That's it, it goes straight in. And I find these are a fun little geek project. All right, so we're gonna get the top and bottom plastic off because this one's pretty shrecked up bad. I'm not even gonna be gentle, but you know, if you care about yours, you know, <laughs> try to use plastic or something, but really this, this lad is doomed for the pile, really. It is glued down, by the way, so yes, enjoy that. And if you scratch this, it's really bright and silver underneath, so if you've got a pink one, it's not gonna look very good. Yuck. <laughs> Ugh. So on the top we've got these little Phillips screws, we just gotta take these lads out. Alright, this crazy looking thing, this thing's so over engineered, it's heaps fun. Uh, there's little slots here, we want to get something into this, I mean it's like a circlip, and so we want to push in to release out. I'm just gonna cheat. <laughs> See, you push in and it pokes out. I'm cheating here, I'm lousy. So be careful on this side, this is where the control ribbon is for the click wheel. <laughs> So be careful with this, you can easily tear this ribbon here. So I find using like a little spudger, you just do one side and then the other side and you slowly wiggle it out. All right, once we got that, the fun bit, we're gonna push it all out. Yeah, come on out. There we are, click wheel stays in there. There's our motherboard, here's our battery. Just unstick this lead. And you can see this guy's all covered up in tape. So if you want to get this out, you've got to undo these bits of tape here at the corners and wiggle it out. If I'm trying to get all this tape back on, by the way, I do recommend just, uh, just flash molding it or something. Ah, she's free. There you go. Aha. There you go. So that comes off if you need it to. There you go. It's like the headphone jack and all that. Carefully push these clips. Uh-huh, and there you go. Ah, dingus, now I gotta get it all back together again. <laughs> Look, it broke. It just pulled itself out of its plug. Oh, how annoying. Ah, oh, I tried as carefully as I could. Maybe I could put it back in the pin. <gasps> That's annoying. That's junk. Oh, you stupid thing. Welcome to old iPods, much. I have a spare motherboard somewhere. <laughs> Look, a spare motherboard appears. Let's just pretend that that's been hooked back on and that everything's fine. Off to the pile with you. You know, right at this point is when, you know, if you're flash modding it, this is when you do it. Uh, and then somehow the tape goes back over top, but I never get this bit right. So I'm not normally reusing these. They're good enough. <laughs> Pretend this is a new battery. Please be careful putting this back in. You can knock this little resistor off right here. And if you get that off, you're just in big trouble and then the click wheel won't work and it'll drive you nuts. Oh, and by the way, if you do want to take the click wheel out, you just push and slide. And there you go. What a cool design. The metal, ah, love it. Let's reassemble. Keep all the guts together. And if this loosens off, it's not that big of a deal. You can just push it back on. I'm gonna watch through here. You gotta watch out for that resistor to not get bonked off. Tight fit. Yep. There she goes. Push the click wheel back on. Usually at this point's a good time to test it. This really was just dug out of the hoard. I've never looked on this. Ooh, it's unhappy. <laughs> oh well. All right, screws back on the top. So with this lead, just get it into one side of the grooves. Shaboink. Oh, what a beautiful example. Uh, you might need double stick tape. You might have to redo the adhesive. Oh dear, this poor rough old nugget. But yeah, let's hope yours is nicer than this one. The fifth gen. A lovely generation it is too. The very last of the white iPods and the introduction of a black one, which just looks great. Although there was the U2 version with the fourth gen, blah, blah. So this is my flash modded one. And this is one that I've just dug out of the pile, which is hopefully how you just might find yours. And it's very sad. But hey, let's see what she does. I'm just gonna put that jungle juice straight in. Let's see what happens. 
nothing. This might only be good as a teardown instruction. All right, let's get in there. So we've got our blade tool. There's these little clips that run along here. We're trying to push them inwards and then it will all pop out. So I cut along the seam to get the tool in and then under and this just blew open straight away. Uh, yeah, you only have to do one side, you know, from up here to here. And then usually you can just uh, wiggle it out. So off to the right with these ones and what the heck, everything's already unplugged in here. <laughs> and there's screws missing in the hard drive. Normally, the battery's already hooked up. Let's pretend the battery's still hooked up. Okay, so we're gonna go away and to the right. So you unplug the battery down here, and, oh, that's a screw for the hard drive. Uh, oh, no, that's not even plugged in. Oh, I think it's safe to say that someone's been in here. Well, if you wanna get this battery out, find a bit of icy probe helps you, 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 doubly doubly. Plastic. There you go, battery out. Just be careful of these really thin ribbon cables because that controls the hold and there's your headphone as well. So if you're having headphone jack problems, replacing this assembly, the two of them tied together, just might help you out. There's just little screws in there and that all just falls out. So we're gonna pull this down, revealing our connector. Shaboink. Wow, look, the display's already disconnected. Someone has been all through this. Normally it's connected like that. So if all you do was the hard drive and the battery, this is as far as you need to go. But let's get that display out. So this case is absolutely shrekt beyond belief. So we're gonna take all these little screws out. What am I doing? Put them in the back case. They are tiny, these little lads. Come on, Bubby, that's it. There we go, back case off, don't get fingerprints on any of this. <gasps> that screen is sharted, isn't it? All right, so let's peel that away. There's a grounding tab stick down thing as well. Pull that aside, don't lose the button. And I realize this is missing the metal cover that goes on the back of this as well. That's annoying. This iPod's a mess, but hey, this is what you're probably in for anyways. Bad display. On these fifth gens, this is a grounding point that is stuck here. Okay, unstick that. Now the MOBO is glued to this chassis. So you just gotta very carefully push. Ah, uh, uh, yuck, and there you go. There's all the glue residue. Now we can get at the click wheel. This is stuck down as well, so don't just pull on it. Unstick it, and then we need to push. It's very odd. Hey, <laughs> and there we go, a completely discombobulated iPod 5th gen. So the hard drive is gonzo, it's got screws missing, that's k. Okay. This front display is terrible, and the display itself is smashed. Amazingly in my hood, I've got a front black panel and a screen. Oh, it doesn't have the metal shielding there. I don't know where that went. But if you look at the iFixit guide, it's all in there. I <laughs> mean, Well, let's get this hot mess back together. Yeah, it's meant to have like a, a shielding plate behind here, but it doesn't matter. There's two little pegs there you can line up with. So the way I like to get the, the middle button in here is to put it in upside down, then flip like that. Now, I like to put this on top, reaching through. Not a bad start, mate, not a bad start. Let's get all the screws in there. Sometimes I find squeezing helps. Sometimes the holes don't line up. Uh, if you lose any of these screws and you can't find them, just try and get the corners at least. You basically got two mulligans. Now flick that up, because that's actually where all this hooks in, which I should have needed to do when I was undoing it, but someone had already done it. Yeah, mate. This battery's cooked, but it's going in anyways, because I don't have a spare. This is a totally random drive. I have no idea if it works, but I know it's the same model one. Flip up that. We're gonna push towards like that, clip, down, up, and over. That little cut out there, clever. Flip up, and now we're gonna plug the battery in. Before you clip it together, I mean, we're gonna have a go and see if anything happens. Come on, Bobby. Not good. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, and that's what happens when you pull iPods just out of the junk. Yeah, oh well. Well, that was a disaster. Let's seal it up anyway and pretend that it works. We're just pretending. Oh, nice repair, all fixed. Oh uh, well, at least it looks better now. Except for that. And just to show you what a flash mod of one of these is like on the inside. Let's connect. See, that's how it's meant to be. But, iFlash kit, yeah, 256 gigs, and a massive battery to make up for the extra space I gained from taking the hard drive out. This thing's a monster and it's lovely. Well, at least one of these turns on. So finally, it's the most common and hardest to open iPod. The 6th slash 7th generation. This is the one I found at Cashies and the battery's so sad it doesn't do anything anymore. But hey, plenty fun to open because she's already pretty shrecked. Now before I said that you want to grab one of these, well for this model you're going to want at least three of these. Ooh, dangerous unshielded one, oh dear. Because this is made of aluminium and it doesn't bend and reflex back like plastic does. It bends and stays there. And these clips are nightmarish to get to. I hate doing this. I've already done a whole video on the hardest iPod to open open but let's go again all right it's the same gist but just up an extra level take a dig at each corner and pick the weakest one like aha good good start okay now we're gonna push in these have sprung kind of tabs in here and we want to push all the way until they go click all right next one oh, we're in the heart of it now the same rules as the other ones, we're just working on one side. You don't need to do a full lap. As soon as one side pops, you've got it. But none of these have popped yet. Pop, ding it. That's a pop, there you go, uh-huh. All right, this side's given up. Move our reinforcements down to the bottom. Another clip under here. This one could be hard. You could use the Pro Strat. Gently lever on this. I really do mean gently. Pro Strat. Pop your dingus. Oh, it's been dropped so many times. <laughs> oh, this is so typical. I hate opening these. This sucks. Oh, and the first one's clipped back in again. Great. So to be the most common ones, mate. Right? Oh, oh. It's all bent out of shape. Oh dear. Oh wow. Oh, this is all this is taking a drop on this corner and is now a nightmare at the moment. Uh, just release, you idiot. <sighs> oh, I think I got it. Oh, man. I stand by it. I hate opening these. All right, it's just like the fifth gen. Pull the battery out and to the left. So these are stuck down. You can use a bit of heat, a bit of icy probe helps just to get underneath that glue. Be very careful of that ribbon cable underneath there. This drive's a good one, by the way, so let's pull this down and out. Don't lose those little rubber bumpers there, they're important. Let's get the headphone assembly and hold wake. All right, so if you're only doing the battery in the drive, mate, you can just turn around and stop here. But we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom. So we're gonna take all these little screws out. Guys, iPod is disgusting. All right, let's pull apart the outside to the chassis. There we are. Don't get any fingerprints on the inside of this. All right, just gonna disconnect the screen here. All weird metal business that comes out with it. Those of you who've come from my, oh, there we are. <laughs> yeah, it all just fell out. So the fifth gen's meant to have this as well. And to get this motherboard off, we literally just push. It's glued on, only. There's two little extra screws right here. Glue should let go. Da und go. Take the click wheel off. Up. So this is glued down. So you just gotta very, very carefully try and peel this up. And then push out. There we are, home button. Oh jeez, mister. Now we're gonna try and get this lad back together again. <laughs> Those holes in the right spot. So my way of getting the center button back in is like that. And you gently scoop her up like that. Now, I like to hold that in position while I lower this over the top. Mm-hmm. All right, we're gonna put all these screws back in. 
We'll have to squeeze them together to help the screws line up. Don't have a new one, we're using the old one. Same with this drive, this drive works fine. And so the kits that turn the fifth gens into flash modded pods are the same as the kits that work with the sixth and seventh gens. Like literally identical. On the inside, these are really similar and there's even interchangeable parts, which I've got to do a whole vid on anyways at some point. But same stuff for this, we're working this in the exact same way. Ah, look, the drive thing broke. This thing is rough, man. Let's see if she even boots. Where's that firewire? Hey, there we go. Yeah, Bobby. Nice, I'm calling that a win. No lie, iFlash actually recommends that you bend the panels back in the shape because of that. So you just lean it on a table and give it a bit of that business. Uh, I don't care because I'm open this again at some point. But hey, there we go. We had this completely disassembled and reassembled. So, I mean, while this video is a bit dirty and slapped together, I just wanted to be a point of first contact to give you the confidence to jump in there and do this. These guys are far hardier than they look. I mean, Shrek Pod touch much? I don't know if you can see that, but she's still working under there. <laughs> and once you've opened these, like that's the hardest bit and then it's just about screws and clips and things don't be afraid of making mistakes I've broken so many pods you have no idea I mean that click wheel for instance and I hope I've helped in some sort of way so big thanks for watching huge thanks to my patrons these stinky names right here mate one dollar a month I do extra vids uh, for this week I'm gonna do a very typical patron video I'm gonna show you behind the scenes. This setup here, my studio room where I edit things and that's where Frank lives so one dollar a month I've already got that vid up there now so I'll see you all next time. Oh, I'm such an idiot. What a waste. I'm so glad this was changeable if I did this on the first gen. Oh, Bobby.